Hey guys, welcome back to another Tales from the Locksmith. So, got a little bit of news to kick off with. Um, there's the new Smart Key tool for Gen 5 has come out. Well, we've got ours on order. You, uh, you're going to want that if you're using the camera in tandem with the new tool because uh, you can't tell the difference between 1, 2, and 3 with the camera, the cuts. So, using this tool in tandem with the camera is going to allow you to decode those extra one two and three now uh shout out to true locksmith discord there um was able to decode one without it here uh yesterday uh, by progressively cutting nine different keys because so i knew three of the cuts i knew uh one was a four two were a five so i had two mystery cuts cut nine keys and one worked so you can still get around it without it it just yeah you got to be pretty pretty sure of what you've got right i mean if you've got the more mystery ones you have the harder it is and you got to be really able to tell the difference between the four and then the one through three because if you're off you're, you're going to be struggling here so something i'm looking to i would get it i like the lock tech camera i think it's very very good um yeah anyways um, other news, raffle is in full force, so go bid, we're in the LPU, raffle's going, we got ours up, you can now do your donations and, and for your charity, get your tickets and go start bidding on stuff. Uh, yeah, that's about it for that, I hope your guys' new year was good, I hope Christmas was good, haven't seen you since then. Um, thought we would get into a little tip for some of the locksmiths out there and maybe some of the newer guys who are going to open up some stuff this is a question I get quite a bit is when when should I be asking for ID and it sounds like a basic thing like oh you always ask for ID like don't like, you have to every time and it's, uh, I, I, I actually disagree there is some times when asking for ID is it could be putting you in a bad place and I'll, I'll give you some examples so Let's say you ask for ID and you go, well, how are you going to verify that ID is even real? I, I don't have access to ICBC here in, in Vancouver. I don't have access to the RCMP, so I can't tell that this ID they're giving me is legit. It, it could be a complete fake. That's, that's one. Uh, same with the registration. Like, let's say you let them into a vehicle. If I call up the insurance company and say, oh, is this, is this car registered to this person? They're going to laugh at me and tell me we can't tell you that and then hang up. Okay. So you can't verify it. And there is some situations you could be putting yourself in that could be quite dangerous. Now, that's not to say every time you go out. I, I, I think most people call locksmith when they need in their house or they need in their car. It's They're, they're not up to no good. It's just not, not happening. Now... That's what I say. It never happens because we definitely get the odd call, where yeah, people people are calling a locksmith to break into a house, to break into a car. Like it's not uncommon. So a scenario where it would be a bad idea, and I I tell my guys, you just get the job done and get out of there as fast as you can, and we'll deal with it after. So if you're in a parkade at two in the morning, and you go to show up to do a vehicle open up, and all of a sudden you get there and there's three or four people and there's one of you and you've got no cell service and you know they're looking a bit questionable baby just don't bother just just open the car get out of there write down the license plate once you get out you know take a mental note get out remember what they look like write it down write down everything you can and and just get yourself out of there because at the end of the day you're a locksmith you're not you're not the cops Dude, you're just there to do your job and go home. And you got to go home at the end of the day. Now, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're down at Parkade and it's a little old lady, come on. She looks like she's like 75. I'd be like, what are you doing up at 2 in the morning? Where are you going? But, like, you know, most people are on the up and up. But that's a good example of how asking for ID might might not be the best thing you know if it's gonna put you in a position where now you know 
that they know that you know that they're not supposed to be there. Or it's not their car, or it's not their house. Now, so now how are you going to get out? So it's you, you and this person are standing there, and you both know that they're committing a crime. Just saying. Just saying that I've seen a lot of these documentaries where people are living in a house with dead bodies for weeks on end. You don't know what you're walking into. Next thing you know, you let this person back into this house, and because they know that you know who they are, you know, it's, it's not good. It's not good. You know, they pull out the ID, and you look at it, and it's not the right address, and then you're sitting there like, my guy, <laughs> this ain't your house. You know, it's it's dead obvious. When you look at it, go, this is 403, 193 Street, and and, and your ID says, like, McCallum. Uh, this ain't right. So do you have, like, different ID or a rental agreement or something? Because, yeah. You know? And you know what? From my experience, at least, and I can't say for everybody, for, for me... It's not been the people who have wrong ID that are up to no good. It's usually people who have the right ID and they have the everything matches up, but they've either sold the car or they moved out or they were kicked out or it's a divorce. That's that's usually the ones a divorce or boyfriend, girlfriend broke up. That's that's usually yeah, that's the one. So which which segues us into our next little part which is the tales from the locksmith right so i went to a job geez a little over a year ago and call was normal guys like hey, yeah i just got in uh I, you know i'm coming back from the airport i'm gonna be at my house in about an hour do you mind meeting me there i i've you know i'm coming back from china i've lost my keys but i need in my house I say, okay sure no worries. Sounds good. And uh, show up. Check his ID. ID matches the unit to townhome. So uh, I go to pick the lock. I pick the lock and I go to open the door and boom, door blocker. I'm like, huh, there's a door blocker, my guy. Like, why is there a door blocker? He's like, oh, well, he, I, le I left through my garage. And, you know, when the garage door closes, yeah, I guess I put the door blocker on because I was going to be away for a while. And he, like, dude's got all his luggage. Like, he's legit came off an airplane. He's got four or five big things of luggage just chilling. And uh, he's like, there's no, like, keypad on the garage door. Doesn't have this garage door opener. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, that's a little weird, but whatever. I'm like, okay, well, is there another entry? Because, like, this is going to be pretty, pretty rough. It's like, well, yeah, there's a sliding glass door in the back, but I think I put the a track of wood in, in, in the in the track there. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can, like, get my air wedge, prop the door open a little, and I'm going to, like, use my vehicle rod to pop the wood out. Sure, sounds good, right? And, uh, but then to make it even seem more legit, his neighbor, who he knows, quite clearly knows, let us walk at like 8.30 at night straight through his apartment or his townhome to the backside. Because like this, this unit was in like the middle of the townhome. So you got like a row, probably 15 of them, and they're dead center. So instead of going all the way around, his neighbor's like, yeah, yeah, come through, come through. Like, yeah, how you been? And they're like just chit-chatting, chit-chatting away. And it's like, just seems, you know, like there's some red flags, but it's like... Yeah, but he's got the ID and everything seems, it's, you know, every lip, if everything that was a red flag, there was another thing going, okay, well, yeah, it seems, it's weird, but checks out. So anyways, go around the back. I got the, I got the vehicle around in there. I was starting to fucking tink, tink, tink to get it out. And all of a sudden, the blinds on the sliding door open. And I'm like, and, I, and I'm like on my knees and I look up and I go, and I'm thinking, oh, fuck. And this lady's inside banging on the window with a finger going, he's not supposed to be here. And I'm like, ah, fuck. And I shoot up, turn around, and as I turn around, and like, it's like a fenced little back patio area, he just starts fucking going off. Like, just fucking losing it. Starts fucking banging on the window himself, trying to like smash the door in or something. And I'm like, 
fuck this. I literally jumped the fence, 911 right away. I'm like, yeah, like, here's the address. you got to come right now. She already called him. <laughs> They're around the front side of the house. And I'm like, no, no, come around the back. Come around the back. Come around the back. Like, he's he's around back. And so I'm just chilling on the other side of the fence. So I'm not getting involved, man. I'm a locksmith. I'm not there to take people out. And like I said, Canada, no guns. I ain't getting involved, man. I'm not fist fighting some dude. Fuck that. So anyways, cops come running around. They take him. Uh, yeah, I guess they, they broke up or whatever. She was seeing somebody else. And he caught wind of it. Came back from China. to fuck, I don't know. Anyways. so But that goes to show, man. You check the ID. You did your due dilly. It was right. And then you're still in a position where some dude is clearly trying to be somewhere he's not supposed to be and he knows he's not supposed to be there. See? So sometimes, sometimes, certain situations, I don't ask. Because sometimes it's safer for me to not get involved and just go home so that I can go home. Okay, I'm not getting shot or getting stabbed, well, stabbed's more likely here, because somebody's trying to do something they're not supposed to do. And I can't verify any of this information anyways. You know, that, and that's, that's something we've talked about as locksmiths, is that we should really have a system that, like, it doesn't have to be crazy, something basic. I mean, dude, if I've got somebody's driver's license, I've already got their driver's license. I've got all that private information sitting in my hand. I should be able to go onto a special locksmith website pump it in just like with nastiff because i'm pretty sure the vin pops that up like if you don't have the right info they come back and go hey man that wasn't right i should be able to do the same with driver's license for a house be like does this person live here and it doesn't even have to give me like any super detailing just a green check mark or a red x hey yeah man that guy doesn't live there that's not his registered address don't let him in or the property doesn't belong whatever right just something to give me and the, like, just give locksmiths at something to verify. Because, like I said, man, if you've got that ID, you already know. But still, it, that, even if you had that, though, you still could end up in a position at 4 o'clock in the morning at a parkade with three dudes who kind of look like gangbangers who, yeah, they're probably stealing the car. And, what, are you going to get get in the way of that? For what? Write it down. You know, if it's really that suspicious, write it down. Get paid, get out, call the cops. But main concern for us, get out. Get out, get home, man. So I'm sure some guy's going to hate on that. I don't give a fuck. Like I said, man, at the end of the day, I'm more concerned that my Smiths are going home to their families than your fucking car. Anyways, guys, that's mine. Check out Raffle. See you next week.